really want to go into this Cori Bush conversation. On Wednesday, the House debated a bill on police reform called the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. This bill had previously passed the House last year by a 236 to 181 vote, but it was not considered by the Republican-led Senate and was opposed by, of course, at the time, President Trump. Uh, The House is voted again on this, has voted again on this bill last night. And during the floor debate, okay, Mm -hmm. on the George Floyd Act, Cori Bush gave this passionate, real, in-your-face speech. And I need you guys to drop everything you're doing right now and take a listen. Madam Speaker, first of all, we shouldn't be talking about good police and bad police. There should just be police that are doing their job to serve and protect the people. So let's make that clear. There's no such thing as good police. There's no good nurse. When you go get food, you don't go look for the, this place has a good chef, this one has a bad chef. I'm going to go where the bad chef is. We don't need, we, we don't need this good police, bad police. We need police if we're going to have police, but I'll move on. Madam Speaker, St. Louis and I rise on behalf of the more than 788 people who have been killed by law enforcement over the last year. We rise 30 years to the day after the ruthless beating of Rodney King. We rise in honor of Breonna Taylor, who was brutally gunned down by police in her home last March. We rise for George Floyd and all those who have been killed by police since his torture and murder. Those names... William Burgess, Mark Brewer, Dion Johnson, Tony McDade, Rashard Brooks, Modesto Reyes, Reuben Smith, David McAtee, Kamal Flowers, Robert Harris, Joseph Denton, Vincent Truitt, Sincere Pierce, Jeremy Southern, Angelo Grooms, Amir Johnson, Casey Goodman, the more than 100 (laughs) people whose names have been withheld by police, Hakeem Littleton, I will not... The gentleman from New York reserves, the gentleman from Ohio is recognized. Time is expired. Order. Order. The gentleman is no longer recognized. The gentleman from New York reserves, the gentleman from Ohio is recognized. So the House passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act over nine months after George Floyd's death by a vote of 220 to 212. The bill would ban police chokeholds, eliminate qualified immunity, and require data collection on all police encounters. On Wednesday evening, Congresswoman Bush tweeted out after she was appointed uh, as the uh, the vice chair of the subcommittee. She said, 2014, we started a movement for justice in Ferguson. Today, we were appointed vice chair of the subcommittee that oversees policing. The fight for Black lives doesn't just have a seat at the table. We're Mm. continuing to lead the way. And just for a little bit of context on that, Cori Bush was appointed vice chair of the House Committee on the Judiciary's Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security. So this itself is history. I, like I was um, discussing with Ben in our backstage, um, in our virtual backstage, I don't understand why this isn't news. I dropped this in our producer's uh, chat yesterday and they couldn't find where it it was. They thought it was something that she said before. I'm like, nah, that was done today, just a few moments ago. Now, if this was somebody else saying some BS, one of the uh, uh, white representatives or whoever about, about Dr. Seuss, which has been in the news cycle for about two days now, that would have made right. news. But this is such an important topic, such an important conversation. Corey Bush being vice chair of this particular committee committee that can that will mm. that will change so much that will help in A changing lot. so much. Do you know how long it took us to get here? Do you guys understand how long it took mm. us to get here? Mm. She was she was somebody on the front lines in Ferguson. That's it. And now right. she's here at creating the the whole thing, leading the charge and making changes. This is what we need to say, see, and this is what needs to be news. And these are the people who should be celebrated. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you, and you're so right. Like <laughs> they're talking about Dr. Seuss on the news, on the news. Like the number one like thing that people, somebody still. jumped in, 
like, like somebody jumped in my my mentions about uh oh not my mentions but on facebook saying ben like you're not upset about the mr potato head no longer being a mister <laughs> i'm like is this really what media and 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 politics has become they would rather you be upset about the <laughs> gender of a potato toy not even a damn potato <laughs> but a potato <laughs> toy <laughs> than all the people who are killed by police officers every single year. They want you to be upset about this imagined war on Dr. Seuss than actual lives being taken by police officers every single year. In fact, Tucker Carlson is going to do a segment tonight, I guarantee you, about the atrocities of cancel culture because we're canceling or whoever is canceling Dr. Seuss and because of Mr. Potato. They are more concerned with that. And then what he's going to do is blame, blame drug use for George Floyd's death versus the fact that we saw the video of Derek Chauvin kneeling on his neck for mm -hmm. eight and a half minutes. So, Rebecca, I think that's the only context and the lens that we need to really consider this through, because, of course, she's speaking truth to power, but she's been speaking truth to power and, since she was in the streets on the front line. Like you said, like she's a nurse, she's a minister, she's an activist, she's done all these things. She's been speaking truth to power. And now she's in the halls of Congress with the position of power and she's actually acting on it. And they got us out here talking about a damn potato head. Damn that's America head. in 2021. And the, but it also shows us how <laughs> I dare say racist. The media is mm. and how they will pacify the people. Uh, the and this, this this is a good example of how the Democrats run. They'll mm. pacify certain people and make it That's look it. good in the fluff over here. Understand yeah. that they can be a little racist and they can be. They don't want to be so radical and they don't want to be X, Y, and Z. And if they do mention this, it's going to place people like Joe Biden at the forefront of what are you doing? Because you got this woman over here holding it down. What yeah. are you saying? What are you doing? How are you doing it? You know. So this is why I think mainstream media misses the mark and yeah. um you know this is her first term she's been yeah. pushing she's been so vocal people i'm pretty sure people want her to shut up and saying you need to get hazed like you need to go mm, through the process right only in her first term within days right. of her being there she had to experience a terrorist attack Right. And then she still had to pull up to work and still come speak about things like this and right. start up a, 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 a committee like this and mm. and and be rebellious, something yeah. that is probably not common on that floor, at least by black and brown people. OK, right. until right. just recently or and then we're getting the first hand look. We've never been this so connected to our congresswomen or our, yeah. our other representatives like That's we have been now because we got we can see them and we should be following them and we should be hearing what they're saying. And this news of her heading this committee should be something that is mainstream right. news. It should be everywhere. But since it's not, it's going to be right here on Like It or Not. And I'm glad <laughs> that we were able to educate you guys on who she is and what she's doing and how it's going to help all of us black and brown people as it, when it comes to policing. Now, she said something very clear. Now, she may have want she may want to do away with policing. But if we're going to have policing, right. we are going to do we're going to have we're not going to have good and bad police. We're going to have police that police. do their job. Hello. Why that because why are they OK? Why are they OK with the idea of good cops and bad cops? Right. I'm glad she actually just kind of blew that dichotomy out the water. Like why, especially when all cops are licensed to kill, like <laughs> we won't put up with a bad chef. Y'all want us to put up with a bad cop who can come in our community and gun us down and get away with it. And we can't hold them accountable because qualified immunity. Right. So, so it should be completely unacceptable Rebecca, like you're saying, it should be completely unacceptable that we simply are OK with the idea of good cops and bad cops, because if we can't have all got good cops, then we don't need to have no cops because nobody should have a license to come in our neighborhoods and gun us down. And we just sit back and say, oh, there's a few bad apples. Yeah, that few bad apples just kill somebody. 